Welcome to today's video, guys. Today, it's kind of just another day in the shop. Um, busy as always. So we're trying to get a bunch done. But we're gonna pop in with Dylan and see what he's up to. So Dylan has his new lathe. He's a full machinist here, um, so he runs that whole department. He doesn't love being on camera, but I force him to be on camera because uh, what he does is really sick. And we're moving to doing everything in-house. Now I think we're doing like 85 to 90% of everything that we make in-house, which is insane. But here's his car actually. So Dylan drives this S2000, drives at the track, time attacks it. Super sick car. We want him to drift it. He's not drifting it. Sick car, sick dude. What's going on guys? It's Dylan here again, and today we are gonna go over our new Haas lathe. So what we have here is a Haas ST15 lathe. This is a two axis lathe, single spindle, but it does have a parts catcher. And we also have this pretty cool thing, which is a bar feeder. What the bar feeder lets us do in turn with the parts catcher here is run a pretty simple but effective form of automation. So this lathe we have purchased to do our smaller stuff like spacers, bungs, all of our small manufacturing materials that we did outsource before. So it just gives us more control of what we make, the quality we make, the quantities, wait times, as we know, shipping is crazy right now. So to make sure that we can actually make our product and get it to you guys on time, we have invested in this nice little thing. About the control panel, it's actually more or less the same. It's a next-gen controller. So the nice thing about having the mill and the lathe being on the same controller is just ease of use. Uh, you're kind of, you're used to this. So getting used to this lathe, um, I haven't had a ton of experience with lathes before. So taking this on was a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, having the controller be the same as the mill has been really nice and kind of gets you up to speed a little bit quicker. So controller, basically the same as uh, the mill itself. Obviously we're controlling a different axis than the mill, but the interface is all the same. Uh, the bar feeder is also connected to the controller. So we'll go over the bar feeder a little bit later and just kind of how it ties in with the machine. The other features that we got on this guy will be the parts catcher. This kind of lets us with the bar feeder run in succession. So right now we're just doing our three quarter bungs that we weld into our control arms, uppers, lowers, anything that uh, a three quarter heim joint goes into. So right now it'll run apart and it'll actually come in part it off and then the bar feeder will advance our stock again and it'll run the part over. So basically we can have a timer on here and just pick the number of parts that we want to do per run so we can check our tolerances, check our tools or whatnot and we just grab a part out of here. Got a little bit of coolant on it so. so there we go, the envelope will just have a couple of bungs in there. Machine keeps running and uh, that way it lets me get it kind of up and going. We can focus on the mill, programming, or whatever else I have to do. All right, so we'll give you a quick view of inside of the lathe now. So on the turret, uh, we've been kind of sorting out over the, how long have we had this jack? Like no, four I, months? I think it's been longer than that. No, I don't think so. I think it showed up middle of February. Anyway, anyway. we've had it for a few months now. So we've been able to kind of get a good uh, rhythm going for how the turret's gonna be set up. You can see how we're starting with a lot of our stick tools. We've got these guys spaced out here, so that's a threader, pouring bar, and our drill for this operation here. If you wanna look in here, we have a tailstock that we're still kinda of looking for a few excuses to use it for. A lot of the stuff that we're making on the lathe currently is gonna be small stuff like spacers or whatever, but it will come in handy. Other than that, we've got this little guy right here, which is a probe to measure our tools, which is super nice. You don't have to come touch the, the jaws or use any sort of uh, manual tool setters. So that's a nice little feature. And then we can also go into our parts catcher. So this little guy right here, we'll extend it. So that's gonna work in unison with our program. It's programmable by an M code in. So when we part it off, chop it off here, it rolls down and then into our little envelope here where you can actually see there's a couple guys hanging out in there right now. That is how we automate it. We put that into the cycle. Once it's done, the bar feeder will advance the bar forward again and then we just do it all over again. So we also have a chip conveyor built into this machine as well. Underneath the base, you can see our conveyor system here. 
and then we follow that all the way over here, travels up down into our bin, which will then take out to our scrap bin. To our lathe, we also have this guy, which is a bar feeder. Like I said before, will help us get into automation. So this machine will run on its own as long as we have the material, the tooling is good, and the program will loop. So we can open it up here and I'll show you guys the basics of this. So right now, there is a bar loaded into the spindle here on the back of the lathe. So this bar here is what will advance our material through the chuck each time. If we look up here, we've got another piece of material ready. We can kind of, I'll go over how we load that as well. The big red handle that's very obviously sticking out here. This will adjust our tray. So for different types of material, different diameters of material, you switch out our liners, which we have here as well. So these guys will go into the back of the lathe up to the chuck and that will kind of hold the material so it's not bouncing around as the, the chuck spins around. So we adjust that. We push it away here. So you can come in here, Jack. This collet right here, spring collet will come out. This liner that holds the material is what we switch out for the different diameters. So that's how you switch that out. Bar feeder goes back, switch it out. Bar feeder comes back in. Pretty simple, but uh, very effective at keeping us going. Makeshift material folder. So trying to keep all of our material off of the floor and off of the shelves over there. Different lengths here, we can kind of go over that. So obviously all the materials are different. Aluminum is gonna be a lot lighter than stainless or, or a steel, right? So with the RPM that the programs will see, sometimes you will get, because we're only holding the material with the, the jaws of the chuck, right? All this is supported by the liner, but you can get turbulence at a certain RPM. So we've kind of figured out along the way, this is the bar length that we can kind of get out of it. Obviously you want to use the most bar per cycle because you're off cut at the end, you can't hold on to the very end of it and still make a part. So that gets recycled. So we just kind of go with the longest bar we can cut without getting a lot of turbulence because that'll kind of introduce chatter to the part itself. So that's why we have kind of different lengths here. The bigger material you'll see is a little bit shorter, but this is what we're doing right now. This is some chromoly for our bungs. Go around here and then in the back of the bar feeder, simple as loading it up here. Slide it down. And then we can pop this open. You see that's kind of our tray. So once we are at the end of the bar, the bar feeder will kind of come up here measure and knows that there's no more material that it can make a part from and then it'll rotate a new bar in reload the the push rod and just keep going all right guys so that was a little introduction to the lathe and the bar feeder uh, i think in the future we can get in some videos about the different spacers we make the rack pushing some of our tie rods so we do use a lathe for op one on a couple parts where we will then go over to the mill and then finish a part off like our smooth adjusters we use both machines for so if you're interested in seeing some of that kind of stuff programming a setup on how we run parts on both machines uh, let us know in the comments and we'll get on it now you want to do the like and subscribe do you have any giveaways all right Aluminum though, stainless is expensive right now, so you can have an yeah, aluminum one. All right, so if you want a free co-op kid, Brandon's gonna be the next giveaway. Pretty hard worker actually. No, you're, not, you're too valuable for the giveaway. <laughs>